to isolate that particular section. And there he grabs the middle one. And this section is um, a straight linear curve that describes the mesh. So it's going to be a dense, very dense looking curve, which is completely unusable. Uh, consequently, uh, the next thing, part of the process would be to create curves from that section. Um, and in, uh, in this video, Niels is going to basically uh, determine his patch layout essentially by understanding that he's going to create patches from the slabs from those flat areas and have a transition secondary uh, uh, surface in the high curvature uh, area and use a degree five bezier for that and quadratic beziers for the flatter parts. Here he used his fit curve to put a quadratic uh, bezier on this and checks the deviation to make sure it's all cool. Here he's just organizing things. So next he's just gonna use edit point curves uh, and raise the degree of quadratic and make them, as Barry had mentioned in the previous class, starting as simple as possible um, because things are going to get com very complex later on. So the, the, the simpler you can keep things throughout the process, uh, the better your life's going to be further on down. And here he checks, checking the deviation. And he creates another one on the top here. And because they're simple, when you extend them, they extend nicely and you can uh, see where they will intersect. If you create complex curves from the beginning, they're not gonna, they're gonna end up doing this when you extend them or that. And, and good luck creating a curve to, to transition between those in the middle uh, afterwards. So as you can see, he's uh, doing a lot of tedious manual fiddling to get what he likes. So then he'll scale them back to the point of transition to the, the high curvature part in the middle and then make a blend curve in the, uh, between those. Uh, that's degree five. And at this point, now he's going to use a combination of um, <coughs> extending back um, those quadratics and using the blend curve functions to tweak the blend curve to get the shape of the curve to match the section, and also shortly to get um, to evaluate the curvature between the three curves. So you can see how that's uh, not so good up in the sharp corner there. Not so good here. This is what he's fixing. And of course, that looks a lot better, but he's strayed from the section. So now he's going to have to draw those back to get closer to the section again. A little bit of back and forth. Right. 
Um, in, the next, in this next video now, he's gonna create uh, surfaces from the curves he makes, and he made in the last one. And he's brought in the sections that he'd cut from before uh, to match to. Uh, and he's gonna create a double-sided draft surface with this center line. And because this object is obviously, this uh, console is, is symmetric, he's going to use uh, symmetry planes so that when he starts doing direct modeling, he can do one side and the other side will follow. So he's turned sections back on again for the surface he made, and he can compare them with the, the uh, geometry sections from, uh, that he'd cut previously. Those are the symmetry planes. So now he can, with the transform CV tool, he can now modify those rows and bring the surface down to the scans. The transform CV tool is pretty much a bread and, bread and butter tool in this process, along with a line. And we continually upgrade those tools uh, every release. There's always something we need to do to improve the workflow, streamline it, make it faster, make it more accurate. And in this one, he now fine tunes these surfaces to get curvature continuity between the three of them. He's going to align them first. That way, when he works on the curvature rows with a line in the the middle surface, the two end ones will move. When he extends the end surfaces, the middle one will, will follow. So he's working with simple Bezier surfaces, but with these tools he can uh, manipulate all three at the same time. So he's got, I think those are the Z sections. Uh, yes, Z and. Okay, he's going to turn on a line shortly. He's turned sections on for these three surfaces. And uh, we'll now go through a process of manipulating the rows of the degree five surface and extending or negatively extending the end surfaces back and forth until he gets a good fit to the sections and he gets the continuity likes. Surfacing to scans using this method is pretty tedious, and you can imagine in the early design phase if the design's changing and the scans are changing frequently, it's, this is not something you want to be doing over again. Uh, 
this is just um, sort of a slight departure from that. Instead of actually building that high curvature uh, curve in the middle, um, you could not do that. Uh, just create um, the flatter uh, overbuilt surfaces and intersect and trim them, and then use surface transition tools to create the high curvature sur uh, surface in the middle. Oops. I wanted to hit play. So here he's just selecting these overbuilt surfaces and intersecting and trimming them, trim convert. And eventually, he ends up with this overbuilt shell. And he can, I won't go into the secondary surface creation there. Then finally, building transition surfaces. Um, and this really is just showing um, building uh, general fillets. This is also 2013, so you're not actually seeing the form factor um, UI in this particular video. Um, but the last two releases, 2014 and 2015, um, we've done a significant amount of work in the filleting tools in all of the rolled edge tools, um, surface fillet, symmetric fillet, fillet flange, panel gap, freeform blend. We've put this form factor um, um, intro we've introduced form factor to cre so that those uh, tools will create um, fillets that will all um, work with each other uh, when you uh, when the tools are used in conjunction. Um, we've also worked on the cord fillet math. Uh, we've rewritten that so that cordal fillets play nicer with freeform blend, um, and uh, we've worked on fillet extensions. Uh, all of this is really to get consistency in, in all of the tools that are building transition surfaces. Uh, and uh, just to finish this off, um, this is just evaluating the final result. In this particular case, the, the tessellation tolerance is low, so he just cranks it up to make sure that that's what the problem is, not his model. So, I mean, this workflow is fairly tedious, fairly deliberate, and takes uh, a lot of patience and expertise and a good eye. And there's the, the final console. So, um, and for Auto Studio 2015, uh, after it shipped, we shipped a subscription release uh, that has some enhancements. Um, not for this particular, well, for mesh preparation and for creating surfaces uh, directly on meshes. Um, so we've, we've added some uh, new uh, selection methods uh, in and there's now three tools that'll have these selection methods, subset, smooth, and a new tool. Um, so we've added brush and normal angle to the usual um, lasso method. Um, we've also improved the fit scan tool. The fit scan tool is traditionally used actually 
when you've already got surface built to scan and you get a new scan that has changed and you want to fit uh, your existing surface to the new scan, um, that's what it used to do. It was a bit history challenged. In other words, uh, it was not sort of up to snuff with the rest of our tools um, as far as uh, our history system. So we've uh, fixed that and also allowed you to create surface with this tool so you can click four points and, and create a surface on the mesh. And we've added a new mesh tool called Surface for Mesh, uh, developed in collaboration with the uh, Virtual Shape Research guys. And this allows you to create a uh, surface directly on the mesh. Uh, these videos are created, uh, this is in Alias 2015, uh, and they were created by uh, the product designer who works on alias Jonathan Brown. Uh, and here's, uh, this is the mesh preparation video I skipped in the previous one. So he'll load a mesh and do the usual dialing down the transparency. I almost think that the default for that should be different. Um, and he'll shade it up. and uh, run the mesh repair tool on it. And this will analyze the mesh. And this is a pretty good mesh, so the degenerate triangles and manifold passes and the consistent triangle orientation passes. But it's found a couple of holes. So it uses the hole fill tool. This uh, existed before. 2015, but when we get to uh, subset and smooth, we'll see uh, the new selection methods in action. So he puts the curvature evaluation shader on, and this particular model has some pretty tight, um, high curvature areas. So it's, very, it's pretty well it's well defined in this regard, and that this is going to help with certain kinds of selection, and maybe not with others. Really, it'll depend on what, how your mesh looks in terms of curvature as to which ones you can use. Here, he's found a blemish on the roof, and uh, when he puts on uh, the smooth tool here, it's, initially it started out in normal selection mode, which isn't really appropriate for this case, so he switches it to brush. And you can just select the triangles that are on that bump and run the smooth algorithm a couple of times to smooth it out. That one looks OK. So next, you'll bring up the Mesh Subset tool. And uh, here's a demonstration of normal angle selection on the roof uh, where you can essentially set a normal angle and it will select triangles within that range. You increase the range. In this case, it went too far. You can right click on areas you don't want so you can adjust the selection until you get it right. And you'll see later actually that uh, for this roof, there's a better way to select those triangles. That just gives you some idea of now extra functionality you have for mesh selection. So he'll subset this mesh using the usual lasso because uh, we want to get rid of the block on the bottom. Um, so the fit scan tool, uh, it will now automatically create a surface from four points on the mesh, which it didn't do before. Um, the query edit history is now possible, and when you move the mesh or the surface, the things will update, which didn't happen before. Um, and of course, in the process of making history 
fully operational in this tool and having the model now updating more often, we uncovered a pretty serious performance problem which you wouldn't notice necessarily before. Um, so we fixed that as well. Um, so in this video, um, Jonathan will show you the new FitzCan workflow. And from a, um, he used, puts the curvature evaluation shader on again and, and to find, he's going to surface this uh, body side here and he's using paint tools much like Barry showed in the, in his presentation to mark out the areas where he thinks his surfaces should be. Uh, this particular body side is a bit of an S shape, so he's going to choose to, well, he's not doing the entire side here for the purposes of time, so he's just going to build three surfaces along the side here in the three different major areas of curvature. So he just drops four points down, and there's a surface. And you can drag the corners uh, in the process of creating this to get it exactly where you want it to be. So in this case, he's going to move those points to the uh, to the inflection point there, where the curvature of the transitions to the middle surface, and make it stop there eventually. I think at some point you'll turn the deviation on. So it's a degree five Bezier, and I think at some point he will turn the deviation check on. So he's doing the second one now. The, the first question you might ask yourself is why didn't it build to the edge of the first one? Uh, we asked ourselves that too, and so you could imagine that would be one of the first improvements subsequent to this that we do. I don't think it's such a big deal uh, at the moment. I mean, you can align the three surfaces he makes afterwards and essentially accomplish the same thing, but I think it would uh, it would be convenient. He's with a deviation check on now. And maximum deviation in this case is a millimeter and a half. This one's uh, half a millimeter. So I think um, building these three surfaces using this method rather than cutting sections and fitting curves and building surfaces from those curves is a little bit faster. Uh, I think he's now going to align them. Got the green C. Uh, the next thing I want to show you, improvement I want to show you, is the surface for mesh tool. So this was developed uh, with the virtual shape research guys. 
Um, this uh, tool actually has an additional selection method for curvature, uh, and it has the, the other methods I mentioned as well. Uh, this tool will create simple surfaces, that is within, uh, inside the boundary of the selected uh, selection, uh, or a theoretical surface which will overbuild a surface to encompass the whole selection, uh, or it'll create um, boundaries that will match the, the shape of the, the selection. And it comes with a smoothing option. So he's put on some sections for reference. So here's a, this just is showing the difference between, you know, painting on using a normal angle selection, which works just fine. Or in this particular case, since this model is, you can use the curvature method with one click and get the area you want. So he just hits build and that's the simple surface that's contained within the selection. And you'll change that. Uh, this is the mesh boundary version of it. where the boundaries of the surface are trying to match the selection area and then the overbuilt theoretical surface. And now he's going to move on to the We'll do the body side like we did with the FitScan tool. In this case, though, he's going to choose his similar patch uh, selection, but he's going to use paint, uh, the paint, the brush mode, sorry, to uh, select the mesh. He's creating um, theoretical surfaces in this case. Um, f improvements that we want to make this are, you know, I mean, this is the first iteration of this tool, and we already have uh, ideas for to improve it some more. It would obviously be useful if you could grab the boundaries and extend them or extrapolate them. Now he has to go to the extend tool to do this but I think we could do this within the tool and to be able to grab the four corners, obviously, as well. And now we'll go to the back side of the car and we'll see a similar workflow, but he'll use uh, smooth as well. And you'll see also here that um, he's going to adjust the selection after it's been made and after the surface has been made and the surface updates to the adjusted selection. He's checking the deviation and uh, you'll find that somewhere down here, the triangles of influence, there's um, the deviation to some degree and they don't need to be considered, I think, without losing design intent, so he can erase some of those triangles from consideration and the surface will update and he'll get a better surface out of it.
there. And after this, you can now you just use other tools for uh, tweaking the surface that you would normally do. Um, so the next thing I will uh, touch on is uh, benefits of doing high quality um, geometry from the bat, off the bat. Obviously, um, in order to make this uh, quick, more automatic methods can be used. Um, I think it's, um, however you end up with geometry that's more multi-span nerves that's a uh, much easier much harder to uh, to deal with afterwards and systems that produce that kind of stuff it's uh, great for getting quick uh, output that maybe you can use to print again perhaps uh, but you have little control it's not class a um, in alias the methods are manual and semi-automatic and we're, we're trying to add basically more to the semi-automatic angle of this to improve the amount of time it takes you to do this, but also allow you to keep the quality and the control over your model so that it's easier to edit later. Uh, it's lighter, surfaces are more controllable, you keep the design intent. And in fact, maybe um, early on in the process, if it's easier to create uh, models uh, from scan, um, you may not be so um, um, fussed about doing things over again, or uh, um, and yeah, th throwing models out and doing them over again because uh, it should be easier to control. Um, so that's um, pretty much it for my presentation. Um, so based on the feedback we've got so far on these tools, um, as I said, we for surface to mesh, we want to try and add uh, some manual extension, extrapolation of the boundaries uh, after the surface is created. Uh, we want to add corner manipulators, uh, like in the fit scan tool, um, and probably add symmetry, actually, to the surface to mesh tool, so you can um, create double-sided surfaces. Uh, and we have, uh, there's other grander ideas. If you were at the automotive lunch the other day, Steve Hooper mentioned, uh, this live scan workflow, which is um, which is a project that we've only just really started thinking about now, um, but with the uh, joint with Delcam joining the company, uh, I think there's uh, more opportunity for collaboration with expertise there to to get a faster iterative, uh, you know, digital uh, clay uh, workflow. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with them uh, soon on that. Um, and also, we'll continue to collaborate with the Virtual Shape Research uh, developers in Ronenberg. They provide a lot of uh, good mathematical expertise. Um, and that's, uh, that's basically it. And uh, don't forget to fill out the session feedback form. And are there any questions? None. This will be in service and automotive or which license models are these? Ooh, systems? tricky question. Uh, they're in Auto Studio. Surface from Mesh is in Auto Studio. FitScan was I think was already in Surface, so the improvements for that are in Surface, but I think Surface from Mesh is in Auto Studio. The selection, mesh selection would be in I think all of the all of them. I think the mesh tools might even be in design. So whatever, you know, the tools that we improved, whatever product had those services are gonna get, uh, had those tools, we'll get the improvements. I think service from mesh is in Auto Studio only.
Well, if there's nothing else, you've got 15 minutes back to your day.